Good evening, America. Today is Wednesday, um, September the 27th. It is 4.11 p.m. We're going to start off with Psalms uh, 144, I believe. Yes, Psalms 144. I will read it from both Bibles. Here, Psalms 144 is a psalm of King David. The psalm, psalmist praises God and petitions his deliverance. The psalmist is praising God and he's petitioning for God's deliverance. And this is a psalm of King David. It has 15 verses in it. It has uh, an array of colors we have. We're starting off with purple for the Trinity, the first two verses. Then we have two verses of pink for witnessing. And we have several verses of orange for your faith. One verse of black for sin. Um, and one verse of red for discipleship. One verse of... Uh, Blue for salvation, verse 10 is blue, and for verse 9 is red. <clears throat> and it says, Blessed be the Lord, my strength, which teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Blessed be the Lord, my strength, which teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Verse 2, also purple, my goodness and my fortress. My high tower, my deliverer, my shield, and he in whom I trust, who subdueth my people under me. He is my goodness, he is my fortress, my high tower, my deliverer. He is my shield, and he is whom I trust, who subdues my people under me. Three and four, Lord. What is man that thou takest knowledge of him? Exclamation mark. Or the son of man that thou makest account of him? Exclamation mark. For man is like to vanity. His days are as a shadow that passes away. This is how quickly our life goes. It just comes and goes. You're born. You, you start walking. You start school. You're 18. After 21. The years just fly by, okay? So man is like vanity. His days are as a shadow that passes away. Five, six, and seven is orange for your faith. Bow thy heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. Yes, bow thy heavens, O Lord, come down. Touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. Six, cast forth lightning, and scatter them. Shoot out thy arrows, and destroy them. Seven, send thy hand from above. Rid me and deliver me out of great waters from the hand of strange children. Eight, black, whose mouth speaketh vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. Not only just the children have a right hand of falsehood, but so does many of the prophets of today have a right hand of falsehood. Whose mouth speaketh vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. 9. I will sing a new song unto thee, O God, upon a sorcery and an instrument of ten strings shall I sing praises unto thee. I will sing a new song unto thee, O God, upon a sorcery and an instrument of ten strings will I sing praises unto thee. 10. For, uh, blue for your salvation. It is he that giveth salvation unto kings, who delivereth David his servant from the harmful sword. It is he that giveth salvation unto kings, who delivereth David his servant from the hand, from the harmful sword. 11, 12, 13, and 14, again, is orange for your faith. Rid me and deliver me from the hand of strange children who mouth speak vanity, and their right hand is a hand of falsehood. 12, that our sons may be as plants grow up in their youth, that our daughters may be 
that are daughters, that our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth, that our daughters may be as cornerstones polished after the similitude of a palace. Thirteen, that our gardeners may be full according to all manner of store, that our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our streets. Uh, Fourteen, that our oxen may be strong to labor, that there be no breaking in nor going out, that there be no complaining in our streets. Heavenly Father, thank you, for he hates complaining. Okay, ten, uh, fifteen, I'm sorry, is green for love. Happy is that people that is in such a case. Yea, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. Amen. Yes, we are very happy about that. Let's read it from here. Here it just says Psalms 144 of David. Praise be to the Lord my rock who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle. To he is my loving God and my fortress, my stronghold, my deliverer, my shield, in whom I take refuge, who subdues people under me. Three, O oh Lord, what is man that you care for him, the son of man that you think of him? Um, for a man is like a breath, his days are like a fleeting shadow. Five, parts of your heaven. Part of your heaven, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains so that they smoke. Six, send forth lightning and scatter the enemy. Shoot your arrows and rope them. Seven, reach down your hands from high. Deliver me and rescue me from the mighty waters, from the hands of foreigners. Eight, whose mouths are full of lies, whose right hand are deceitful. Yes, Father, whose mouths are full of lies, whose right hand are deceitful. Nine, I will sing a new song to you, O God, on the ten strings lyrics. I will make music to you. Ten, to the one who gives victory to king, who deliver his servant David from the deadly sword. Eleven, deliver me and rescue me from the hand of foreigners whose mouths are full of lies, whose right hand are deceitful. Twelve, then our sons in their youth, will they be well-nurtured plants, and our daughters will be like pillars carved to adore a palace. Thirteen, our barns will be filled with every kind of provision. Our sheep will increase by thousands, by ten thousands, by tens of thousands in our fields. Fourteen, our oxen will draw heavy loads. There will be no breaching of walls, no going into captivity, no cry of distress in our streets. Amen. 15. Blessed are the people of whom it, this is true. Blessed are the people whose God is the Lord. We're going to be reading from Psalms 90 because we are back on the topic of the wrath of God. Not a very popular topic. Nobody else seems to be on this topic but myself. A very unpopular topic indeed um i'm gonna start reading a little bit from my notes and then we will go into psalms 90 uh, find it first. psalms 90 there you go okay these notes were taken september 18 2000 15, 6.34 p.m. Wrath of God, described as anger. The wrath of God can be described as anger. Numbers 32, 10 to 13. Uh, Reuben and Gad seek to inherit the land east of the Jordan. This is what's going on in Numbers 32. Numbers 32, 10. And the Lord's anger was kindled the same time, and he swore, saying, Numbers 32, 11, Surely, this is uppercase lettering also, Surely none of the men that came up out of Egypt from twenty years old and upward shall see the land which I swore unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto, um, unto Abraham, and Isaac, and unto Jacob, because they have not followed me woolly. They just kept on provoking God. 
um, from the minute they left uh, Egypt, it was just a constant battle with these people, or these Israelites from that he had rescued out of the hand of Egypt. They were constantly sinning against the Lord. Um, and Moses would redirect the people and they would behave for a while and then suddenly they would be back into their complaining. They wanted olives, they wanted leeks, they wanted onions, they wanted cucumbers, they want this, they want that. So they were always constantly complaining that we need water, where we're going to get water from. They had, they had, they were so quick to forget what God had already done for them. So quick, like that. They forgot that the Lord had opened up the Red Sea and had them walk on dry ground, not muddy, murky, wet ground, on dry ground, okay? He created an, uh, um, a show for them on their right or on their left. They could see the see animals through the water. The water was actually standing on its own. That was the power of God. And I don't I don't understand even to this day why the people continue to complain. He has showed his might towards them. Um, he has showed them many wonders, and and despite all that he had already done for them, they continue to believe that he was not able to do this, that, and the other. So they continuously provoke God with their complaining. Um, and the thing about God is that even though you may be in your tent talking to your family member, he can hear he made the ear. He could hear what you're saying. He 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 knew what you were going to say before you said it, okay? Even though Moses was not there when they complained about Moses, his brothers and sisters complained about Moses, the Lord heard all of that, okay? He was a mighty God indeed. I don't know what, 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 what more he needed to do to convince the people that he is the only true God of Israel, okay? So because he, they, they complained so much and provoked him to anger, he began to hate the people. And not only that, he wanted to destroy them. Uh, he told Moses, I will give you a whole new crew better than these. But Moses was always too concerned about the wrong things. What would the Egyptians think? Okay, so it came to a time when the Lord just finally said, surely, None of the men that come out of Egypt from 20 years old and upward shall see the land which I swore unto Abraham, unto Isaac, unto Jacob, because they have not wholly followed me. And many people today do not wholly follow the Lord. And those are the ones that the world listens to. This is just mind-blowing. The world does not recognize the true servants of the Lord, but they recognize the false prophets, and they listen to them. And they these prophets do not prophesy using the word of God to them. They actually babble to you. Okay? So the Lord said that anybody 20 and over, you won't see that line. Uh, Numbers 30 to 12. Save Selim, the son of uh, Jephunneh, and the Canaanite, and Joshua, the son of Nun, for they have followed the Lord. 32 13. And the Lord's anger was kindled against Israel, and he made them wander in the wilderness 40 years. This was an 11 day journey. 11 days turn into 40 years because of their stubbornness, their stiff-necked, the same generation as is today. You cannot, you cannot protect the evil. I don't care how much you may, how many laws you come up with, man. Man, you cannot protect that which is evil unto the sight of God. Okay, you cannot, you cannot strengthen the hand of the evil. How do you strengthen the hand of the evil? By creating laws that protect them. You cannot do that. That is sinning against God. 
All right, and 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 though you may try, man may try to protect that which is evil, God can destroy them at any given time. And the Lord's anger was kindled against Israel, and he made them wander in the wilderness 40 years until all the generation that had done evil in the sight of the Lord were consumed. His anger, the Lord's wrath can be described not as not just as anger, but it's all it's also described as fury. What is what is something that you can describe as fury? A volcano is ferocious. The Lord can be ferocious towards us, okay, for that which we are doing. Okay, so it can be described as ferocious in, in Psalms 90. This is what we will be reading today. Um, but I will read a few of these that I have written down. Psalms 99, verse 9. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. Psalms 90, 10. The days of our years are three scores years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet is their strength labored and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. We cannot live forever. We are just mere mortals. Okay, we can think that. We can't even live to be 600 or we can't live to be 200 years old anymore because of our behavior, because we have forsaken God. We can't live long anymore. Many of the prophets in the biblical time lived to be two, three, six hundred years old. Okay, Psalms 90. 11, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Wisdom comes from God. It is not something that man can reproduce. Man can reproduce a building, books, things of that nature. But wisdom, knowledge, understanding, peace, joy, these are things that man has absolutely no control over. Man has no control over the weather. Man has no control over many of the things relating to earth. None. It, it cannot control the sun nor the moon. None of that. Man cannot control how many meteorites hit this earth on a yearly basis. None of that. Okay. So it says, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. In order to apply your heart unto wisdom, you must know God. He is the only one that can give you wisdom. He can give you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding because those three walk together. Wherever there's wisdom, there will be understanding. Okay? Um... So let's go right into the reading of Psalms 90. Psalms 90, let's read it from both, Father. This is just heartbreaking. This is heartbreaking America. This is, this is, this is, we're, we're treading on dangerous waters. Okay? We are provoking God to an anger greater than the, the, the Israelites face. Okay. We are really pushing God's buttons. All right. Uh, Psalms 90 talks about God's days are eternal, but man's days are numbered. We'll read it from both. Uh, verse, uh, it has 17 verses. We have the first four verses are purple for the Trinity we have five and six is pink for witnessing. Seven and eight is black for sin. We go back to witnessing from nine to twelve. Thirteen is orange for your faith. Fourteen and fifteen is for love. Sixteen, seventeen is orange for your faith again. So I will be flip-flopping from one Bible to the next. It says that this is a prayer of Moses, the man of God. Lord. Thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations, even this generation now. He is our dwelling place. 
He keeps us. He keeps the sun shining. He keeps the moon shining. He keeps the air where we can breathe in. He keeps our enemies at bay. He does so much for us. And what do we do? We turn our backs on him. We provoke him to anger. We change our sexes. We marry the same sex. We are You have women who are having sex with animals. Men who are mounting their horses and their hounds. This is just repulsive. Repulsive America. And you think we're not going to pay a price for this. It's going to be severe. Okay? Severe. All right. It says, Lord, thou hast been our drilling place in all generations. Two. Before the mountains were brought forth, or even thou hast formed the earth and the world. Even from everlasting to ever, everlasting, thou art God. He will always be around. Always. Three, thou turnest man to destruction and sayest, Return ye children of men. Return unto him. Repent of your sins. Ask for forgiveness. Confess your wrongs. Uh, change your life. Four, for a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past and as a watch in the night. Just a watch in the night. A thousand years. To God is just a watch in the night. Okay. Five and six. Pink for witnesses. Oh, let's let's go here. Let's do uh, one to four. From here. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations too. Before the mountains were born or you brought forth the earth and the world. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Three, you turn back men to dust, saying, return to dust, O sons of men. Four, for a thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. Five, thou carries them away as with a flood. They are as a, a sleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. Six, in the morning it flourishes and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withered. Five, you sweep men away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. Six, through, though in the morning it springs up new, by evening it is dry and withered. Seven, black for sin. For we, we are consumed by thy anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our inequities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. 7. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. The people, in order, in order for you be, to be terrified, you must first have fear of God. You must first fear him. To be wise enough to be terrified. But if you have no fear for God, you will do anything. Anything. You will be malicious, deceptive. You will kill. You will do anything because you have no fear of replication from God. Okay? We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. Eight, you have set our inequities before you, our secret sin in the light of your presence. There is nowhere we can hide and do your wickedness that God can't see you doing it. Nowhere. If you go up in the mountains, he is there. If you go down to the depths of the sea, he is there. You go in your bedroom and shut the door, he is there. You go to hell. He is there. There is nowhere you can hide from him and hide your sins. Nowhere. Okay. Nine. Nine to twelve is painful witnesses. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. Ten. The days of our years are three scores and ten. And if by reason of strength they are four score, yet is their strength labor and sorrow. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. Eleven. Who knoweth the power of thy anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. 
12. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Let's go here. All our days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. 10. The length of our days is 70 years or 80 if we have strength. Yet their span is but trouble and sorrow. For they are quickly passed and we fly away. 11. Who knows the power of your anger? For your wrath is as great as the fear that is due you. We are to fear God. That is the beginning of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You must first have a fear of God. Who knows the power of your anger? And your wrath is as great as the fear that is due you. 12. Teach us to number our days aright that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Okay. 13. Orange for your faith. Return, O Lord, how long? And let it repent thee concerning thy servant. Um, 13. Here. Relent, relent, O Lord. Exclamation. How long will it be? Have compassion on your servants, on your servants, Father, just on your servants, only for those who fear you, Father, have compassion for them. But for those who have no fear, deal with them accordingly, and they are in great numbers in this generation that have no fear for God. The numbers are great, greater than in Sodom and Gomorrah, like I said. We make Sodom and Gomorrah look like angels with the things that are happening in this world today. Sodom and Gomorrah look like angels. And you see what became of them. Okay. Relent, O oh Lord! Exclamation mark. How long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. And I ask the Lord to look after us that fear him dearly. Look after his own. But with the wicked, do as he please. Because there are many, many, even in high places, in the Supreme Court, the politicians, most of them are wicked. And that that is good, the world hates. In the same way they hated our Lord, and he was good. But he was hated. Of all the good he did, he was still hated. Third, 14 and 15. Green for love. Oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all of our days. Yes, Father. Satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. 15. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us, and the years wherein we have seen evil. 14. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. 15. Make us glad. For as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have seen trouble, seen trouble, for as many, make us glad, for as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have seen trouble. 16 and 17, orange for your faith. Let thy work appear upon thy servant and thy glory unto, thy, unto their children. Let thy works appear unto thy servant and thy glory unto their children. 17. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish thou the works of our hands upon us. Yea, the works of our hands establish thou it. 16. Make your deeds be shown to your servants, your splendor to their children. 17. May the favor of the Lord our God rest upon us, establish the works of our hands for us. Establish the work of our, of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Okay. So it pays, it pays America to go back to the old ways of doing things. The old ways are the proper ways of doing things. We cannot change everything and 
and and think that there is no um, there there is no price to pay for that which we do. God has made things a certain way. If if women could do all the things men could do, that women would have been created first. But all the animals came before women. The foundation of this earth came before the animals. Adam and the seed of man came before a woman. The woman was the last thing created. There's a reason for that. They are called the weaker vessel. So you cannot take the weaker vessel and put it in a leadership position that has predominantly always been for men. You cannot do that and think we're not going to pay a steep price for it. Much trouble will come our way. Women have come a long ways, but there are some things that women have gone after that is not meant for them. And I really don't care whether you like to hear it or not. It is the truth. Okay? If men and women were equal, the Lord would have went and got himself six women and six men as his 12 disciples. Absolutely not. He had 12 men. Not 12 gay men. Not 12 transvestites. 12 men. The judges of this earth, before there were kings, before there were president, were men. This country called America has been led by men for how many years? As long as there have been presidents. As long as there have been presidents, they have all been men. That is the way God wants it. That is the way it should be. But if we continue in the same road that we're going, you will see what will happen. What will become of this country with a woman president? You will see it. It will not be good at all. And this country is fighting so hard. It's been fighting for 145 years to keep men in the White House. For 145 years. It took 72 years just to allow women to vote. Once you allowed them to vote, they wanted this. Now they want that. They want this. They want that. They want, you cannot be on the same scale as a man. That's why he is made the head. You can't be satisfied just with being able to vote and cast your vote. Now you want the White House. They've been fighting for that White House for 145 years. They fought to vote for 72 years. It is not meant to be. It is good to keep things the way God has created it to be. And this way he will bless us. How, how will he bless us? You will see less children dying of cancer. You will see less people with diabetic problems and health problems. You will see less trouble, more peace upon the land. You will see us living longer. As a reward for us repenting for our sins and turning back to him. He will reward us plentifully. But if we keep going at the rate we're going, it's going to be ugly. And that's why I encourage you to read your Bible. Because when you read your Bible, you're putting on your armor. Put that armor on. Don't take it for granted that you got another day and another day and it didn't happen yesterday, it didn't happen last year. Start learning how to put your armor on. How do you put your armor on? You read the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is your armor. And on a day of destruction, those that have on their armor will be spared. Thank you very much for listening to us here at Spiritual Water. My name is Brenda Guerrero. 
And as always, may the peace of God be upon thee. May the protection of God surround thee. And may the will of God for thy life come from thee. Until the next time, have a wonderful evening.